Jurassic World Rebirth was marketed as the ultimate dinosaur comeback filled with roaring prehistoric beasts and heart-pounding action. From the very first teaser to the full theatrical trailers, the dinosaurs were front and center, promising the kind of thrilling experience fans expect from the franchise. And in many ways, it delivered on that front. Director Gareth Edwards did a great job bringing these monstrous creatures to life with top-tier visual effects that made them feel incredibly real, even though we've never actually seen a real dinosaur. Here's the twist that surprises a lot of people. Two of the coolest and most unforgettable creatures in Jurassic World Rebirth aren't technically dinosaurs at all. Yes, you read that right. The Mosasaurus and the Quetzalcoatlus, two absolute scene stealers in the film, don't actually qualify as dinosaurs by scientific standards. Might sound a little odd considering they're some of the film's major prehistoric attractions. But if we take a closer look at what makes a dinosaur a dinosaur, it starts to make sense. Turns out that while both these creatures are terrifying and majestic in their own right, they belong to totally different branches of prehistoric life. Let's start with the Mosasaurus. In a film, this aquatic predator makes a dramatic entrance in the first act, setting the tone for how powerful and unpredictable these creatures can be, emerges from the depths of the ocean, and launches a terrifying attack on Zora and her crew's research vessel. The scene is explosive, nerve-wracking, and one of the best action moments in Jurassic World Rebirth. The sheer size and force of the Mosasaurus leave you holding your breath. It's a reminder that even the deep sea isn't safe in the Jurassic World universe. Then there's the Quetzalcoatlus. This winged behemoth appears later in the film and adds a thrilling aerial component to the action. It's not just some little flying creature fluttering around. The Quetzalcoatlus is massive, swooping down on characters and causing destruction from the skies. It brings a whole new dimension to the fear factor in the movie, with the sky becoming just as dangerous as the ground or the ocean. Visual effects team did an incredible job bringing it to life. It looks and feels like it belongs in that world. But again, here's the catch, it's not a dinosaur either. So what are they exactly? The Mosasaurus is actually a marine reptile from a group known as Mosasaurs. They live during the late Cretaceous period, around the same time as many dinosaurs, but that doesn't mean they were part of the same family. Mosasaurs were closer in relation to modern day monitor lizards and snakes than to dinosaurs. They lived in the oceans, had fins, and were built for swimming. While they looked monstrous, especially in rebirth, they were very different from the land-based reptiles that are technically classified as dinosaurs. The Quetzalcoatlus, on the other hand, was a type of pterosaur. That means it belonged to a group of flying reptiles that lived alongside dinosaurs, but were not dinosaurs themselves. Think of them as distant cousins. Quetzalcoatlus is famous for being one of the largest known flying animals of all time. With a wingspan that could stretch over 30 feet, it was a giant of the skies and unlike anything alive today. It's easy to understand why the filmmakers wanted to include it. it it's cinematic gold. But just like the Mosasaurus, it doesn't belong in the dinosaur club. So, why does this matter? Well, from a scientific perspective, it's important to classify creatures correctly. Dinosaurs have certain features, like the way their legs are positioned under their bodies and how their hips are structured that separate them from other prehistoric reptiles. The Jurassic franchise has always taken some creative liberties with science, and Rebirth is no different. In this film, the Mosasaurus and Quetzalcoatlus are lumped in with the dinosaurs without much explanation for the average viewer it's easy to assume they all belong to the same category. But that's not the case. Interestingly, the film does get some things right about these creatures, even if it blurs the lines of classification. For instance, Mosasaurus really was a dominant ocean predator during its time. Scientists believe it sat at the top of the marine food chain, eating everything from fish to smaller marine reptiles. The movie captures this idea well, showing how dangerous and unpredictable it could be. However, the version we see in Rebirth is way larger than the real thing. In the film, it's practically the size of a whale. In reality, it would have been closer in size to a large orca, still big, but not quite the sea monster we see on screen. The same goes for the Quetzalcoatlus. While it's portrayed as a massive flying creature in the movie, this depiction is a little more grounded in reality. Scientists widely agree that Quetzalcoatlus had a wingspan that could rival or even exceed what we see in the film. It's considered the largest flying creature ever discovered, some estimates suggest it could have flown for thousands of miles without stopping. Its appearance in Rebirth feels a little more scientifically accurate than the Mosasaurus, even though it's still stylized for cinematic effect. What's really fascinating is how the franchise continues to stretch the boundaries of what dinosaurs can mean. Original Jurassic Park trilogy was mostly focused on land-dwelling theropods like T-Rex and Velociraptors. But as the series has evolved, so has its creature catalog. Jurassic World Rebirth expands the prehistoric universe by including creatures that lived in the air and sea, not just on land. 
This makes the film more exciting and dynamic, but it also means we have to be a little more cautious about what we're calling a dinosaur. That's not to say this is a bad thing. For many fans, thrill of seeing giant creatures, whether they're technically dinosaurs or not, is part of the fun. Jurassic World Rebirth isn't a documentary after all. It's a blockbuster movie meant to entertain, surprise, and make you grip your seat. And on that front, it definitely succeeds. The Mosasaurus and Quetzalcoatlus may not be dinosaurs, but they're still two of the most unforgettable parts of the film. Scenes are packed with tension, stunning visuals, and a real sense of awe. So the next time someone talks about their favorite dinosaurs from Jurassic World Rebirth, you might want to gently remind them that not all prehistoric creatures fall under that label. Some, like Mosasaurus and Quetzalcoatlus, are stars in their own right, but they follow different evolutionary paths. They're not just cool because they're in the movie, they're cool because they represent the incredible diversity of life that once roamed, swam, and flew across our planet. In a way, that's what makes Rebirth feel fresh again. It's not just rehashing the same T-Rex views, human story. It's exploring new environments, introducing new threats, and showcasing different types of prehistoric power. Whether or not these creatures are labeled dinosaurs doesn't take away from their impact. They're a reminder that Earth's ancient past was full of creatures more terrifying and inspiring than we could ever imagine.